got on this lipstick and I don't know where it came from. Because I didn't buy it. Or at least I don't remember buying it. Or I got it from if I left it over here. From somewhere. Where is it? I just seen it the other day. Is it a shade of pink? It is. And it's elf. That's probably mine. And it looked brand new. Girl, shut up. <laughs> The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. What's poppin' you guys? It's me and Mo. We're back with an all-new episode of Since You Ask. Sorry we've been gone, but we had to take a break. We had some responsibilities, jobs, kids, and headaches and shit that need to be tended to. Well, kid. Okay. You got a dog. Kids. Alright, so let's get into our first question. It is subject hey ladies she says all right so a while ago i wrote y'all about the 38 year old baby daddy of my best friend's cousins and i took your advice i left that alone which was a bullet dodge because he ended up getting sh shot didn't die who they got and he got locked up hmm. he's out now but still anyway i moved on to this new guy and he's a good one he works hard no kids he's nice but i'm the type of person to take a minute to get comfortable around new people and it's like he doesn't get the concept of i'm not having sex with you to Stop touching on me and bringing it up. Every time I get ready to just drop and block his ass, he turns the charm on. I like him, but I'm not into taking too fast. Should I just let him go and move on to somebody who has the common sense to know what slow the fuck down means? Or am I overreacting and he's not pushing up on me in a disrespectful way, but it's still too much? Help me. Keep me anonymous, please. Well, since you asked, Monique. Okay, so he's like feeling on you and stuff. I say he doesn't get the concept of I'm not having sex with you, so stop touching on me and bring it up. Okay, so where is he touching on you at? <laughs> Maybe like, oh, you know, doing I mean, all not shit. like, I mean, are you on her leg? No. Is he like trying to finger you under the table what? at the restaurant? I'm just asking because <laughs> a way to prevent all of that is not put yourself in an environment where he feels free to do that. What you mean environment? Like when they alone? Like at his house or something? Or is it out in public? Uh, an environment. I mean, I would probably feel more comfortable grabbing your penis at your house versus at a restaurant. Oh, so that's what I mean. Oh, well, all right. Well, I can see what you're saying then because it kind of leads them to think, you know, mm -hmm. you over somebody's house kicking and laying up on the couch and shit. Because you, you know popular. Netflix and chilling really ain't what that's all about, right? Yeah. But maybe he could be one of them dudes where they at Red Lobster and they sitting in the booth together. He all on her thigh and rubbing all on her arms and shit. He could be that guy. Who knows? Um, I personally don't like it when men are just like touching on me all the time and just highly over sexual. Did he just get out of jail? No. Oh, this is a whole. That was her sister, baby daddy. That she was talking about a regional or a friend, baby daddy, whoever. Okay. So, um, because I always find that they like sex fiend kind of type people they just, just too much if you're getting a weird vibe from him I would say just keep it moving if it's something in your gut that's giving you like a weird vibe move on keep it moving and if you told him that you want to take it slow and he keep on trying to push up on you sexually that's what he in it for then he probably yeah, even took you out too many times to you and he feel him. like he, he ain't got his money's worth yet because that's really what it's all about yeah so I say keep it pushing he just seem like he only in it for the ass. Yeah, and what's wrong with you? Where you ain't got nobody else to get it from until I till I'm ready. Yeah, so that's what we say. On to the next question, anonymous. How do I open myself up for a relationship? Is the subject. So she says, "Hey, Keisha and Mo, I have been single since 2013. Girl, me too. I have seen people. <laughs> I mean, I have seen people in that situationships in between. Me too. Then and now, including a fucked up ass relationship with this older man I met on campus. Not me. Who lied about his age to me and completely just fucked up my head my junior year of college around the fall of 2014." be telling y'all about these old ass niggas he was very manipulative damn near bipolar he wanted to control me and just brought me down as a person i finally got away from him when one night he had gotten my ipad and went through my facebook messages i wasn't messing around with no one else but he was so insecure that the small things he did fine sent him into a rage it took me two to three hours to talk him into letting me leave his into letting you leave his house by this time he had moved off campus he was calling me every bitch and hoe in the book and he always did anything anytime he got mad. Oh no, girl. I had <laughs> wait. 
Yeah, when she said he had moved off campus. Why was he on campus with his old ass? He's so weird. Was he a teacher or some shit? Was he a faculty member? What's going on here? Elaborate. So, I had never been that scared in my life. I dropped him completely after that situation. Problem is, I think I lost all hope. In the summer of 2015, I received a text message from my mother that she meant to send to her boyfriend, which would be no big deal if my mom and dad hadn't been married for almost 30 years. I was sick for weeks after that. I didn't tell anyone because who could I tell and what was I supposed to say? My dad is everything. He's everything a man should be. Now, I just don't believe that good people get what they deserve. This has kept me from being able to commit to Dre. We graduated college together and we have been seeing each other for a while, about a year and a half. We've both done things with other people, but we have always come back together. Recently, he's asked me to be together like his official girlfriend and I'm scared. How do I become more open and trust again? Thanks, Keisha and Mo. Well, since you asked, Mo. Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> I didn't even get the uh, the transition there. It's like, damn, did I bring yeah, the old man, mama cheating, she okay. got a new look. Okay, so the new boo, um, with relationships, um, to begin to trust again, here's the thing, the guy has never, if he hasn't given you anything to not trust him about, then you don't have anything to worry about. Relationships, <coughs> they just are a risk. I mean, you have to put yourself, if you, go, if you agree to be in it, you have to be in it until that person gives you a reason not to be. Yeah. So, I mean... I don't see what you're scared of. You don't know what the situation. You can't. Well, she's scared because the, the old man treated her bad. Now she's finding out that her mama of 30, me, mother and father that has been married for 30 years. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, so she just feel like relationships ain't shit. I mean, after, and, I, and I'm sorry to say this, but I mean, after so many years, somebody done done something. Yeah. And there's a difference between being a good father and a good husband. You don't know what their marriage is like. Yeah, because I, I dated somebody that was a damn good father, but boyfriend, nope. Nope. So, mm -hmm. but that's your mama and your daddy's daddy. cross the bird. Leave that shit alone. They have nothing to do, to do with you. you. You don't know what, I mean, you just don't know. That's just something that you just should not have. Nothing. I mean, yeah, it was fucked up. You had to find out it's what probably, you found out. But. It's probably, they probably been been having issues that you just don't, don't know anything know about. Yeah. Because yeah. they care about you so much, they don't want to put you in the situation. Yeah. But it's wrong regardless. That it's, your mama it's definitely cheating. wrong. Yeah. It's definitely wrong, but... <laughs> you can't then let that affect the way you go into life and relationships. And you can't let what happened with that old ass man um, affect you and Dre. Because like Monique said, if he hasn't given you a cause or a reason to be mistrustful of him, you can't take what other people have done to you and put it on to the new person. It's not fair to him. So you just have to deal with your own trust issues. And if you haven't dealt with them yet or don't feel like you're able to get past this yet, then don't commit to being his girlfriend because all you're going to do is be uh, untrusting of him and always accusing him of shit that he probably ain't doing. It's going to be a recipe for disaster. So get that situation order first before you even commit to being his girlfriend. So let us know what you decide to do, honey bunch. Next question says, Dear Keisha and Mo, both you ladies are fabulous and I pray that you guys keep up the good work. Thank you so Thank much. You. I would like to stay anonymous, please. I matched with this guy on Tinder of September of last year. Let me stop to add. He's 36 and I'm 26. We both also work in finance and corporate America. We ended up talking via text for a month but never met up. Things faded away from there. Fast forward to January 2nd and I received a Happy New Year text from him. I replied and basically said that I was shocked to be hearing from him. He told me that he injured his back in a car accident and that's why he had been MIA. From there, we texted nonstop that week and set up plans to meet up the following Wednesday. He lives in Philly and I'm in Jersey, so he drove the one hour to take me to dinner. He was a perfect gentleman, held doors, helped me take off and put on my coat each time. We had a great time, talked about our relationship and personal do's and don'ts and decided we had similar values and wanted to see each other again. He said he was willing to cancel plans with his friends that Friday. So he could take me out. I agreed and told him that I would drive to Philly because there isn't much to do where I live. I drove to his house and then he Ubered to a really nice Japanese restaurant because parking in Philly is a nightmare. From there we went to a hookah lounge and I got a little tipsy. When we got back to his house he asked if I was okay to drive home. If not I was welcome to take a nap until I felt better. The chemistry between us was so strong that I knew if I went inside we would probably have sex. Sure enough I went in and we slept together that night. He was a perfect gentleman and I left the next morning Saturday. After I left I didn't really hear from <laughs> After I left, I didn't really hear from him all that day, but he had previously told me he was going to be busy helping his brother move 
and I had my aunt's 50th birthday party to attend. Sunday came and he sent me a good morning text and we chatted for a bit via text, but that was it. What did you expect? Monday came and I got the good morning babe text as well and we made plans to hang out that Wednesday. Wednesday came and he drove to my house in Jersey, picked me up and we went bowling, then had a nice dinner. He dropped me home and I invited him in and one thing led to another. We had sex again. It was amazing. But now it's the next day and I got a dry morning, have a good day text that got me feeling the type of way. It's now night time. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And I haven't heard anything from him. I know I shouldn't have slept with him so soon, especially since we haven't discussed if we were exclusive or not. But I really like him and want to see where things go. I also don't like the fact that he always texts me and rarely calls now that we have been intimate i really don't want to date other people but i feel like i'm getting mixed signals from him is it too soon to ask him to define our relationship what should i do any advice is welcome signed confused go ahead monique you don't have to ask him to define your relationship because y'all don't have a relationship he got what he want i don't know what happened Maybe he was tipsy, both of y'all was tipsy, and he was really trying to see, he didn't really get uh, a feel of what the sexual experience was for him. I don't know. But bottom line is, he wanted to get some ass, he got it, and end the story. This is the perfect example of what I be trying to explain to y'all about setting the tone of relationship before you have sex with somebody. Because I know exactly what she feel like. Because she feel like he said... But well, she said she he got a dry good morning. Uh, no, I'm not good have good good this a good day text. Mm -hmm. Well, morning, have a good day text. Uh, day text with him, whatever. So now she's scared and can not even confused. You're afraid because you don't know where y'all stand with each other. You gave him the ass, and now you want a relationship out of him, but y'all ain't established yet before you done fucked him, and now you in a fucked up ass position. Y'all gotta stop giving away the goods to motherfuckers you barely know, don't know where they stand on relationships, values, or whatever, and now you stuck in a position where you dealing with somebody that you like and you. Don't even know if he like you the same way you like him it's just too much y'all gotta stop doing this shit moving with your pussy before you move with your heart and your brain y'all gotta just stop moving so fast with motherfuckers you barely knew first of all guys if they like you if they're into you i don't give a fuck if they're a person that uh typically don't have many words they would pick up the phone to call you at some point oh yeah that, way too much texting <sighs> yeah all that text I mean, that's like, new millennial shit where motherfuckers just text you and don't call but i don't i don't play that shit i'm not gonna have no whole relationship with you via text that's ridiculous oh uh, i was uh, before you even speak i was thinking while i was sitting here is that he could nine times out of ten not even be on nothing but since you done fucked him so fast and you all in your feelings and you nervous you can start getting on some like psycho kind of like crazy shit assuming mm -hmm. that he being some type of way and he ain't really being no type of way and you can cause him to you can push him away by getting all of your feelings like oh my god he don't like me why he ain't responding real quick because you done fucked him now you don't know where y'all stand there so you like all over the place if you would have never fucked him you wouldn't even be tripping off yeah this. that's true that is true it, because you fucked him so fast you sitting up there if you have to ask yourself if you fucking somebody too fast you probably you fuck, fuck him too, too fast, fast. Yeah, exactly. you probably fuck him too fast yeah. But um, because you have that in your head, um, it just seemed like it probably, you know, a week probably seemed like a month, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But um, because you had that in your head already, it just feel like because you're probably thinking that he's supposed to really be on. And maybe you moving too fast. Yeah. Alone. Shit. Ain't nobody going to turn. Ain't a man can turn it down. So. No, nah, ain't a man going to. Now, when he started just turning it down, you know he don't like you. But, um, I know it's been a month almost since you sent this to us. So, I don't know what's happened since then. Um, but at this point, I would just say if a man wants to be in a relationship with you, he will let you know that he wants to be in a relationship with you. You shouldn't have to question or mm -hmm. ask that. But I do feel like this is a conversation y'all should have had about, you know, where do you see yourself? Do you want to be in a relationship? These are questions that you need to ask people when y'all dating. That's the point of dating. But y'all just be skipping all them steps and going straight into fuck and then be confused. And here's another. Here's, this is a red flag to me. This is why I would have let him treat me to dinner and drinks and sent his ass home. Or sent my ass home. Or took an Uber or whatever if I could not drive. Um... When he said that, when you didn't hear from him all the time, and he said that he was in the damn accident, your back ain't got shit to do with your face. Oh, yeah. The text king any motherfucking way? Oh, yeah, girl. That was some bullshit. That was some bullshit. Yeah, that was some bullshit. And you made him off Tinder. Let's keep it all the way 100. Tinder is a hookup app. It's fucking, that's pretty much what it is. I was on Tinder. You will rarely see an account oh, like mine. <laughs> 
I mean, really, but instead of like the serious ones where you got to pay for, like Match.com, you got to yeah, pay for that shit, so ain't nobody playing on them. Mm-hmm. They serious. Yeah. But with a place like Tinder, you rarely see a profile like mine where it says, I'm not into just no, no fuck shit. I'm here for some real shit. I rarely saw a man that had that in his bio. I saw it every blue moon. Every other than that, they just honored to fuck. So you had to realize that going into it, that this was nine times out of ten what he was going to be on. So let us know what has happened since then. I know it's been a minute. Sorry it took us a second to get to you, but we're praying for you, girl. And just be smarter the next time around. Last question before we get into a dirty little secret. Um, this one is an update and response to your advice. Listen to this shit part two. Okay. <laughs> oh my what word. Is this? Girl, you done wrote us a whole novel. Y'all gonna stop sending us y'all whole life story. And I got three reasons shit and have dry mouth and shit. Did you get married to this man? Girl, let me take a sip of water before I even start. She got emojis and shit in this. Oh, I've that's, seen uh, I'm married. Yeah, that's the one. What is this? That's the one who, uh. Is that the one who said, like, you a fucking bitch up? Is that no, that's, that's a whole nother lady. This is? That, that's not Carlotta. <laughs> I, that's not a real name, but that's what we said. She looked like Carlotta. Okay, so this girl says, You ladies had me die laughing. You are all going to have people thinking I have a scar on my face. And, oh, it is her. <laughs> Sorry, Carlotta. <laughs> have a scar on my face and a true job tattoo of the <laughs> was so me. Sorry. I am not rough, but it amazes me how you picked up on that. The fact I was a fighter. I, I had, some, I had some pretty tough friends, but damn ladies, y'all went hard. We're sorry. We were just joking around to be honest with you. Oh, but I said you was cute though. You were yeah. a cute lady. You just look like you'll fuck somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what you fucking us up? We, ris- we recently went to court so he could put himself on child support and hopefully get some legal visitation. Court and blood tests were in the making prior to me writing you. Lo and behold, two of the four children are not his, including the one that made him marry her in the first place. He is... What? <laughs> Girl, she need a whole ass beat. He is very hurt and pissed, but at this point, not surprised. They really fucked up part... It, the really fucked up part is child support has nothing to do with visiting. We have to get an attorney and I don't understand a system that will take your money, license, or freedom, but will not assist assist with you getting to be in your children's lives physically. I think the system fucked up. I also heard through mutual people we know that she is having another baby with the previous baby daddy and he is not claiming either child. My man is growing more and more depressed from being away from his children and even more so he wants the nun, the nine blood children he raised to know he loves them and will always be their father. That's very admirable. He has not seen them since September. This is the longest he's ever been away from his children prior to her bitch fit and disappearance. She was letting him see them but only on her terms time and location the problem is we just don't have money growing on trees to fix this and time is passing by we both work two jobs we help my muck my kids and mother and of course we have to keep a roof over our heads and it's all beginning to be too much he is afraid his children will start to hate him and me because of his absence he does not want them to feel a way but him about him and not get the truth until they're grown and he has missed so much of their lives please help me Help my man. P.S. I let him watch this. He said y'all sound just like me and my friends. And Mo, I knew you was going to say that. LML. A battle with a bitter woman is like, it's just a, it's just a lose-lose situation. You, I mean, you can't win for losing. The problem with, um, with some of the children not being his is that you don't have any legal right to see a child that's not yours. Y'all already working two jobs a piece. You can't let it be because it's going to come to a point where it's going to drive a wedge between y'all. Yeah, you already seen he depressed and shit. And, I mean, working two jobs, y'all couldn't see each other that much. And when you do see and each other. And she's cool. Yeah, and you're tired. See, that's a whole lot to be going on. I would personally, because I had a friend dealing with some issues like that, at a certain point, kids see who the fucking problem is. Yeah. So, as long as there is proof that I made every attempt that I possibly could to see you and then at, at some point you have to let it go and just leave it up to the child when they old enough to make their decision on their own or they old enough to come and see y'all on their own because other than yeah, that what are you going to do? Quit. She's she not going to quit. Yeah. And the fact that she pregnant with another man's baby she be ready to need all the help that she can get. That's why she keep, that's why she's so pissed off about your man 
because she know that that was the only way out that she had. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get so tired of these bitches doing shit like that. Like, girl. So we asked you all to send us in your dirty little secrets. We didn't get a lot of them, so we're just going to include this into our Sent You Egg segment. So our first little dirty little secret is a viewer said, Hey Keisha, I have a problem with heel calluses, so I googled and YouTube different methods of callus removal. I decided to try the mustard method. Never heard of that shit before in my life. The vinegar and turmeric mustard contain softens and dissolves hardened skin. I slathered my feet in mustard and put on the size. Girl, you just need to get you one of them, uh... That's not, you're not supposed to do Girl, that. Girl, I use that motherfucker work working. My feet are smooth as a baby's bottom right now. Get you one of them and call today. I slathered my feet in mustard and put on the socks, but I couldn't walk because I knew it would squish through the socks. So I put dissolvable shower caps on top of the socks and put on my slippers. My man came by on his lunch since it was my day off and asked what the hell I had on my feet. I wouldn't tell him what it was, just that it was a pedicure preparation. He started playing and wrestling and tickling me and pulled my cap and sock off. He said it looked nasty and it stuck. But start but started licking my toes and sucking on my feet. <laughs> so nasty but I started liking it he would be so turned on and I could get, I could get him to do anything I wanted and out in yeah. and out the back bedroom now when I get with the man and try to get them to do it they go in reverse mode and leave I bet girl that was a one to kind of love <laughs> now baby no let me think about it just bounce what's their problem shit they probably wondering the same thing too <laughs> That's funny. Thank you for that dirty little secret. We could have came up with that shit if you motherfucking paid us. Girl, you just gonna have to find somebody with that kind of quiet taste. Maybe going to a foot fetch club or some shit. You gonna have to blindfold somebody and let them find out that they like <laughs> Yeah, it. like, yeah. be like, yeah, do on some, like, yeah, handcuff that nigga to the bed, put a blindfold on him, be like, I got something I want to show you, my nigga, and just do it, and he might like it, and then, there you go. But he gonna wonder what that smell is. <laughs> 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 like hot dogs and shit up in there. Girl, that was a great dirty little secret. If you have a dirty little secret, please email us at dirtylittlesecrets at gmail.com. And if you have a question for us, email us at since you eggs. What is it? Since you eggs one at gmail.com. Got so many fucking email addresses. Thank you all for watching this episode, and we will see you all on the next one. Bye.